Good morning. Today we are going to do the Tunisian honeycomb stitch. I hope that you can see that it, it creates this nice little pattern that does resemble a honeycomb. All right, let's get started. Now, first of all, it consists of two stitches. We've already done both stitches. One is Tunisian simple stitch. The other stitch is a purl stitch. It is just a combination of these stitches. It is a two row repeat. In the first row, and the first row starts like this. Starts with the simple Tunisian crochet stitch, followed by a purl stitch into your next stitch. Then a simple Tunisian crochet stitch, and then a purl. Simple stitch, and then a purl in the next. You're going to repeat that all the way across your piece. Now because this is a small sample, I have exactly the amount that I need for each of these stitches and then my last stitch will be through the two, yarn over, yarn over, pull through one, your return pass is the same as usual, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and I have a little helper here, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, all the way across to the end. Now the second row starts out a little differently. It will start with a purl stitch, but here's one of the things I want you to notice. I get my little pointer here. When you see a stitch like this that comes up like this, you're going to know that that is a simple stitch. When you see the bar across this, you'll know that that is a purl stitch. Now, when you are starting out for the honeycomb, you start out with a purl stitch. And I'll tell you, what I see is those purl stitches kind of go back into the piece so they're a little recessed. But, we'll start out with that purl stitch in the first stitch. Then you'll do a simple Tunisian where the purl was in the first row. Then back to a purl. It's the same thing, just in the opposite pattern. You'll start with a purl, then you'll go into the Tunisian simple, then you'll go back to your purl. You're going to follow that pattern all the way across. If I scream out, it's only because I have a clat, clat cat digging its claws into my knee after the cord that's on this hook. Then you'll go through the two last stitches. Then your return pass is the same. Yarn over, pull through one. Yarn over, pull through two. You'll repeat that all the way across. Now again, we're back to that first repeat, which is a Tunisian simple stitch into that first purl, then a purl stitch, Tunisian simple stitch, followed by a purl, Tunisian simple, followed by a purl, simple, followed by a purl. And then of course we get to the last stitch and we'll go through both stitches as normal. Pull up our loop, then it yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, 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 pull through two, pull through two, 
all the way across like normal. Okay, and now we're ready for that second row repeat, which is a pearl in the first stitch, followed by a Tunisian simple, pearl, Tunisian simple, a pearl stitch, Tunisian simple, pearl stitch, Tunisian simple, and then go through the last two at the end. Return pass is normal. And there you have it. That is your honeycomb stitch. Um, practice this for, and as always, learn to read your stitches like knitting. This is the Tunisian. Um, the easiest way that I remember when I'm doing a honeycomb, once I get that first row started, is that wherever I see a pearl is where I'm going to put a Tunisian simple stitch. Wherever I see my Tunisian simple stitch, I'm going to place a pearl stitch. And if you remember that, you can keep an idea of where you are going with this. Or as always, you can set out a thing where you remember that the odd rows start with the Tunisian simple stitch, pearl stitch. Sorry about that, folks. What you'll remember as you go through, like I said, that first row is Tunisian followed by pearl, Tunisian, pearl, Tunisian, pearl. Then on your second row, which all your evens will be, we'll start out with a pearl followed by a Tunisian simple stitch. Pearl, Tunisian simple stitch. Um, this is just a great way to learn a new stitch. This is a great pattern, like I said that a lot of people like to use it for blankets, for um, cardigans, for um, shirts, whatever you would like to make with it. Now, also notice, you see how my rows do? We have in, then it goes out, and then it comes in again. It's going to be okay. Like I said, when we put our border on the end, we're going to learn how to fill in some of those stitches so that you can make anything look all right. Um, and besides, remember it's just a pattern, a sampler. Look at it like it's your first Tunisian project ever. I know my first crochet project was awful. Um, I do not have it any longer, but um, I do have pictures of it. And um, I always remember that it was quite a mess, but that's okay because it's a learning process. And that's what we're doing here. We are learning Tunisian crochet. We are learning new stitches. Don't be so hard on yourself. Just enjoy the process as you go. Here comes the supervisor. Sorry about that. <laughs> she thinks she's got to get in on everything. So, uh, yeah, that is it for today's Tunisian Tuesday. I hope you did enjoy it. I hope you enjoy this stitch. Um, this is one of my favorite stitches. So, um, yeah, we'll explore some other stitches next week. And uh, see you again next week. All right. Remember to be kinder to yourself, love one another, and I'll see you again next week. Bye.